It's the weekend, Bob. 12 10, the man, Jeff Fox in the box, Gigi Fontaine, my beautiful co host. She ain't no time, boy. She fine. Hit that move again. <laughs> I hate to say this. He remind me of Jerome from uh, Martin right there. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Oh man, we uh we're having fun this afternoon, man. We're all the way uh up until four o'clock right here on twelve ten the man. Let's go to the uh guest line here at twelve ten. Uh my good friend, uh South Florida comedy legend. You follow him on Twitter at real Marvin Dixon. Marvin Dixon is in the building right here on twelve ten the man. Marvin, glad to catch you before you jump on that cruise ship, buddy. How you doing? <laughs> Hey, I'm great, man. How y'all doing? Oh, man, doing great here this afternoon. Happy to be alive. Happy to be in the 305 on a beautiful day. Um, I got to tell you, man. Y'all I sound like it. Yes, sir. You yes, sound sir. Like you party. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, we wish we were you because you getting ready to go on the TJMS cruise, man. Are you looking forward to that? Oh, uh, yeah, but see, I got to tell jokes to pay notes. <laughs> y'all need to have fun, music, and all that stuff. I got to make people laugh for a living. Yeah, man. Uh, and, and we appreciate you for that, man. You, you've done it in South Florida for so many years. Uh, we're all proud of you, first of all. You know, of course, you know, I took you across the waters to the Bahamas with me a couple of times. And, uh, we, we enjoyed ourselves over there. And, and of course, you're well loved over there as well. You started, though, Marvin, from scratch. You started when you mentioned on one of your posts, your recent post, when it was just you and like seven people. That was your yeah, audience. My first show. My first show ever, mm -hmm. I put out maybe 10,000 flyers, and all I had was seven people show up. Wow. But I just kept going, kept going, kept going until I built it up to over 1,500 each and every week. Wow. Talk about what that was like, man, like the, the fact that you never got discouraged, that you kept building and kept building, kept grinding and grinding. What made you not stop? Because I always tell people, when something starts off slow, it can't be nothing but build up. When something starts big, ain't nothing to do but come down. Right. So I felt I was winning then, and I just told the comedians that I booked, man, let's make these seven people laugh like they never laughed before. Mm. And the word of mouth is the best advertisement. And one young, young lady, since that, since that day to now, a uh, young lady by the name of Anita, Anita went to my first show, all the way up until I got her on 1500. She came every week, and I remember she told me something. She said, keep doing this, and I promise you I'm going to do everything to tell everybody I know to come. And the next week, she brought maybe 20 people. Then those 20 started telling others. So it's like, and it exploded to over 1500. And remember this, I did no radio. Wow. That was just straight word of mouth and street promotions. No yep. radio. Yep, you, you you did it, man. And, you know, we were talking, Marvin, about Nipsey Hussle uh, earlier in the show, and he kind of did the same thing in his neighborhood. He started doing mixtapes, selling them out of the trunk, and he just believed in himself, and he bet on himself. You did the same thing. You bet on Marvin, and, and you won. And Nipsey did the same thing, and he won. But then I saw this post on your page the other day uh, when I reached out to you, man, and I had to share it on my page. Because it's so true. We're here trying to figure out why, uh, what happened to Nick Nipsey. Why did that have to happen to him? And to start your post off, you wrote, why can't we be safe in our own neighborhoods? Nipsey died. It's sad to say, but yeah. it's true. We cannot be safe in our own neighborhoods. And it's, 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 it's real horrible to say. We always say we're going to keep it real. But mm -hmm. really, I always say this. People say, I'm going to keep it real. But damn it, you better try to really keep it. Right. In order to really keep it, sometimes you have to relocate because everybody wants to, you might have 10 people show you love and one person has some kind of hate, hatred, uh, something towards you. And what they end up doing is doing something so negative that they can go through all the good and that evil can touch you to rob you. Uh, in this case, hold on. Amelia's passing by. It's not for me. Don't worry about it. It's not for me. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank God. But, but, but Nipsey, what he did, tragically, he lost his life. Right. Whereas I could feel it because I had three 
altering things that happened to me when someone tried to rob me and take my life. But, yeah. I, you know, I always say, I don't know what purpose I'm here for, but God got something planned for me because the first time I was walking out of the club, and, and some guy yelled my name, Marvin Dixon. So I turned around, I didn't recognize him, but, hey, I don't know anybody that knows me. Right. So when I looked, well, he, he was distracting me while a friend of his was running up on me with a gun. Wow. And I heard the friend say, yeah, give it up. But he wasn't close enough on me yet. And I just instinctively ran. And he started shooting, and he shot my truck like maybe eight times. But I got away. Jeez. Because I, I ran behind my truck, and he shot it like eight times, but I was gone. And that was one experience. The next experience, I came home after the show, and next thing you know, I see... Uh, I heard some of the bushes, so I thought it was a dog. You know how you, dogs be in your bush, so I step hard, like, ah, to run them off. Mm-hmm. And I seen something get up, and I said, instinctively, I said, oh, hell. And when I jumped off my porch, I ran into another guy. What they did was they circled me. It was three of them. They circled me in different positions. So whichever way I ran, they were waiting for me to run that way, and all of them had guns. And they took me in there. They beat me, pistol with me, robbed me, and they were going to kill me because one of them said, go ahead and do it. And the other guy said, you check the other room yet? He said, I thought you checked. He said, no, go check the room first. And they threw the pillow over my head. I literally just said my prayers and said, I don't have nothing to lose. I might as well try to fight and escape or something. And I got loose, and I don't know how I got loose. And all three of them were in the room going through the stuff, and I ran out and got away. Wow. And, That's and then the last time, a young guy who I was helping out, a little 19-year-old, I used to give him all the new jobs. I went to West Palm Beach to do a show. He, I remember he kept saying, you know, what time your show is? When you get home? When you, he kept asking me that. But I didn't think nothing of it because I didn't know the little guy for over a year, mm-hmm. giving him odd and jobs. What he did was broke in my house, and, was, and my alarm went off, but I didn't have the alarm hooked up. You know how you hear the siren? I, uh, I took it loose because it kept going off. And But the, they, the, um, the alarm company got signaled, and they sent the police there. He was in my house, in my guest bedroom, with a gun waiting on me to get home. That's incredible. So I just said, what was he going to do? He knew I knew who he was, so I knew he was going to try to rob me and maybe kill me, but he ended up getting caught. And it's just like, sad, I'm not nobody, I'm not on the level like the Kevin Hart's and the Mike Epps and them yet. I do very well for myself, but it's just like, the little I got, you trying to take it and then take my life along with it. And and that's something like, you that... Don't go to, that's you something, Marvin. That, that, oh, it's something. Right. Minor. Yeah. They don't care. And that's something that I wanted to talk to you about because of the experience you had. And we look at what happened with Nipsey. And, you know, we don't want to just blame everything on, on us, but you've actually experienced this. You had you had to walk in those shoes. You know, Nipsey stared down the barrel of a gun in his last moments in life. And it was somebody that looked like he knew. Him. Somebody he knew. And he knew. Yeah, that's 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 the sad part. Somebody who he tried to help. Yeah. And, and why? Why the do you think that is? The guy, because you know what, Jeff. No matter how much you have and how much you do for somebody, a lot of times they mad because they feel like whatever you gave them still ain't enough. If you right. want the million, if you won a lot or the Powerball right now for a hundred million. You could give somebody five million, but you know what they're gonna say? You still got ninety five. You could have gave me more. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's bad to say. Deeper. Yeah, it's deeper it's like, than it's just it's, helping. You know what? It's a lot of people have an envy for yourself, but if you get popular, a lot of times people don't like your popularity. People don't like just you in general for no reason, just no apparent reason. I've heard people say that I don't even like him. You don't, you never met him. I just don't like him. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and now we're in the social media area where people, they hide behind a screen. Right. You see so much derogatory stuff like when Nipsey passed, I never met the brother, never met him, but I've seen him speak in different interviews and stuff like that and I always admired him buying back his block, buying back the community. I admired that. But one thing would trip me out, I've seen people, I don't even know who he is. What's the big, what's the big thing? He just somebody, another, this person got shot, they ain't say nothing about that. My thing is, you didn't say nothing about it either. Mm. I say, Nipsey was somebody's father, somebody's um, significant other, somebody's son. He was somebody's nephew, somebody's uncle. 
grandson. Brother. He was, so he was somebody. Just because he wasn't nationally known like Jay-Z, he was still somebody. We all are somebody. Right. A homeless person is somebody. So when the life is gone, no matter who it is, I'm not, all, I'm not the type to throw shade on one to talk about the other. Mm-hmm. You know, if you ask somebody a question, like, why do men do this? Did a man say, well, why women do this? No, answer the question. Right. Don't try to, don't try to take it somewhere else or direct it another way. Just answer the question. And then if you want to ask a follow-up question, you ask them the follow-up. But answer the question, and a lot of times we can't answer why we don't like somebody. Mm. If you never met a person, never had dealings with that person, nothing. Why you hate them? You That's never, some deep you don't stuff, do man. That's some deep stuff. We're talking to Marvin Dixon, comedian extraordinaire, right here on 1210, The Man. Gigi? I have an answer for that, actually. I don't have a question for Marvin. I'm a fan of yours. Hi. <laughs> um, How you doing, Gigi? <laughs> I'm good. But I do, I mean, I have the full answer, but honestly, it's not just that. Like, that is the issue, but it's deeper because it's taught. And and it's taught and it's been taught from the dawn of what we are as Americans. That's why that movie, Us, when I kept saying it's a great movie, Mm -hmm. and you were like, I didn't get it. Nipsey's Hustle's death was the epitome of what Us was about. In case y'all didn't get it, watch it again. In case y'all didn't get it. Y'all don't understand. If something from the dawn of time, from the beginning of what we know as us as Americans, blacks have been right. pitted against each other. Light skin versus dark skin. This person got yeah. it. This person don't. When somebody say, I don't like that person, but they don't even know them. It's something innate that they were taught young. Something about that person don't sit right with them. And it don't even be nothing. But because everybody's suffering from some form of PTSD, you're teaching your kids. We beat our kids still because that's what we were taught. Mm -hmm. You know, we yell at our kids in ways sometimes that we shouldn't. But guess what? That's what we were taught. That's what we think needs to be done. That's why I said instead of nap time in school, there needs to be one hour of group therapy instead. Because until these kids, especially black and brown kids, can talk about things that their parents maybe don't even understand on a deeper level, this will not get better. It's not about us learning. It's about us healing, period, as a people. Yeah. I I, I wouldn't disagree with that at all, Marvin. What what are your thoughts on what Gigi just said? It is true. It is true. We Mm -hmm. we do need something more deeper in in the community, more deeper in the schools, more deeper family-wise. Think about it. Black families don't really sit down and eat dinner together. No. Nope. <laughs> Everybody grab a plate and go for themselves. Yeah, yep. yeah, you're right about that. We do not, and, and, and I know I'm a product of that. We, maybe Thanksgiving is the only time, and that's yeah. when a, a lot of you all together eating. Family reunion. in actuality, we grab a plate and we scatter. Yeah, we don't You go to your room, room, your sister go to their room, your mom eat there. That's how you do. I mean, we, we don't have family time of talking. What's going on or what's troubling you? Or what's the problem? We don't. And a lot of, I hate to say it, we won family households. Yep. Mm-hmm. Marvin, we won family households. And it's hard for a woman to raise a man. Right. Yeah. So he, he's getting his he's getting his acknowledgement in the streets. And usually the knuckleheads in the streets are dropouts. Yep. A lot of them are, are dope boys. A lot of them are drug heads. So that's what he's acknowledging. And they always, no matter what you did, they find a way how they, they I, I learned one thing. And I listen to brothers talk. Mm-hmm. Man, I'm trying to hit that lick. Mm-hmm. Hit that lick means I need to make as much money some kind of way, whether right. it's robbing, whether it's scheming, whether it's scamming. Right. Not, I, I need to get a job, man, and work, you know, build up my credit, try to get my stuff together. We don't talk that in school either. I always say no. this. In public schools, they need, they need to teach us about financing. Yep. We don't learn that. We, That's what I swear to you, on. I yeah. didn't know nothing about no credit until I was grown. Wow. It's yeah. true. Me neither. That's I was grown. Yeah. And yeah. I was blessed. I was able to buy a house at 19. I got my first house at 19. Right. But I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Mm. I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, the realtor was trying to get me something more. I was like, no, oh, hell no. I know what I can afford. Let me stay here. <laughs> Man. Yeah, but you qualify for a house that costs this much. Yeah, but just in case, because <laughs> you get 30-year mortgage, you'd be like, hey, wait a minute, 30 years is a long time. Right. 
You know, Marvin. I, mean, this was this five. I, I gotta tell you, man, we, you kind of went through a lot of what a lot of celebrities had to deal with. You made it. Like, like I said, you work hard to get to where you got to go, but you made it. Um, I look at a lot of professional athletes, people in all walks of life, but especially athletes, NBA stars who've made it and, and their friends from the hood want to come with them and they feel an obligation to come back. Yeah. And bring them with them. You can't always go back, right, to to bring people that were there with you. You can't take everybody where you got to go, right? But some guys do it. Look at LeBron. Look at KD. But hey, look guys. at, um, no, LeBron is a smart individual. Mm-hmm. He, his friends, his four best friends, exactly. he told them, you all need to go to college. I'm going to pay for it. And when you finish in them four years, it's time for me to re-up my contract. You're going to be my agent. You're going to handle my uh, sponsorship stuff. You're gonna, he gave everybody a job. Yeah. And he built it. Well, these brothers don't do that. Like, Allen obviously used to have 20, 30 people with him. Exactly. Yeah, and what, did they, what did they do? Nobody did nothing. Yep. Same thing with Kevin Garnett. Nobody did nothing. Kevin Garnett, another example. Another example. Yeah. And what, you know what bothers me, though, Marvin, is that Nipsey tried to buy back the block, something I mentioned that we, we would love to see more local artists do here in Miami. Uh, Nipsey came up with the perfect blueprint on how to do it and bring his people up. And unfortunately, he got taken out by one of his own. And that's what bothers me. And thank God it didn't happen to you. Uh, thank God he was there for you in those instances when you had brushes with death. And as someone who's been there, what would you know? You say to people that are listening to you right now? I would say, never give up on your community. Always do stuff for your community. But sometimes you have to remove yourself from the premises because when you're doing so much and you get positive feedback on it, it's some kind of negativity coming towards your way. Some kind of way, shape, form. It's trying to come around to get to you. I don't care what kind of way it is. If you look at Kevin Hart, I mean, um, Kevin, yeah, Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart does so much. Mm-hmm. He gave me and the balance his old school, built, got computers for him. His best friends, they work with him. He does stuff for them. But what happened? One of his friends, one of his own friends, is the one that videotaped him cheating you know, on his he, wife. Um, yeah. cheating on his wife yeah. and tried to blackmail him. His mm-hmm. own friend. <laughs> Root of all evil, man. His own friend. And I told you about this. Kevin was paying that brother well over almost 10000 a week. A week. But guess what he's doing? He's, he, I'm worried about what Kevin making. Oh, he's giving me 10000 But look what he's making. Right. Yeah, what he's, look what he's making. Look what he's spending. Unbelievable. This is some deep stuff, man. But you know, he's not just the community. Yeah. I, I know it's not just There's us. people. But we know about us, <laughs> you know. We don't know about everybody else. Uh, Marvin no, Dixon, man. Don't, uh, go ahead. GG, you're right. You're right, GG. Mm-hmm. It's not just black. You're mm-hmm. right. But mm-hmm. w- when it comes to us, ours is more in de- almost to death, though. Mm-hmm. You know, I've seen other people get robbed, scammed, or whatever, but ours a lot of times ends up in death because it's not just robbing us. It's i got to kill them, too. Yeah. And that's what that's happens. That's the scariest thing. It and I, like I said, I had three brushes with it. Three brushes where, you know, somebody was like going to kill me. Yeah. Well, thank God you're like, still here, man. And yeah, we appreciate I, I, that. I thank God I am too. Hey, let everybody know where they can find you, man. I know you're about town doing shows a lot. Uh, what you got going on? Where they can find you? Follow you on social media. You can follow me on Instagram, The Real Marvin Dixon. And Dixon is the D I X O N, The Real Marvin Dixon. And also, I do a regular. A event, a comedy series at the casino at Dania Beach. My next one will be Mother's Day weekend. And I'm, I'm doing something like that. It's a nice venue, lovely venue. I'm trying to, you know, elevate. Right. I start off at Miami Nice. You know, I did the improv. Now I'm elevating them at the casino. So I'm trying to elevate because I, I love to bring laughter to South Florida. Because South Florida has showed me love. So I'm going to keep continuing showing love. All right, That's you got why it. I was just y'all come on out. Yeah, hey, we won't be there, Gigi. We got to make that a date, babe. We definitely got to make that a date and go check him out down there at the casino. We appreciate the love, man, right here on 1210, the man. Comedian extraordinaire, Marvin Dixon, thank you so much. Hey, thank you all. All right, man, we appreciate it. Back with more right here on 1210, the man.